today's lecture we will discuss about oogenesis right. In the previous lecture we discussed the structure of the sperm and the hormonal regulation for spermatogenesis. So, our today's lecture we will go with oogenesis. Let us start a class today. Now, what is oogenesis? It is the process of formation of haploid ova or matured female gamete from the diploid germinal cells where inside the ovary is called oogenesis. So, what is oogenesis? Genesis means synthesis, synthesis of the ova. What is ova? Ova is a female gamete. Where are female gametes formed? In the female gonads. What is a female gonad? It is a ovary. Which division is required there? Meiotic division is required there. By meiotic division, if the haploid eggs or the matured female gametes are formed from diploid germinal cells inside the ovary is called oogenesis, right? So, we can write down oogenesis as the process of formation of the process of formation of haploid ova or we can call egg from the diploid from from the diploid germinal cells right where are the diploid germinal cells present in the ovary now what is ovary ovary is the female gonad sex organ the female sex organ is ovary ovary contains diploid germinal cells from diploid germinal cells if we do meiotic division then we produce haploid egg that process is called oogenesis germinal cells in the ovary is called shall we write by meiotic division also by meiotic division is called what is it called it is oogenesis this process is called as oogenesis formation of sperm is called spermatogenesis in the male uh, testis is called spermatogenesis formation of egg in the ovary is called oogenesis right so when does the gamete production starts at the age of puberty but then there are so many differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis after completing the process of oogenesis also we will make the differences between spermatogenesis and oogenesis so we can make a statement that spermatogenesis is different from oogenesis right or we can tell oogenesis differs from spermatogenesis oogenesis differs from spermatogenesis in one way two ways or in many ways in many ways there are many points to tell that spermatogenesis occurs like this whereas oogenesis occurs like this now if you have to see i told like when will the process of sperm production starts in males it starts at the age of puberty but whereas oogenesis starts before the girl is born itself means oogenesis starts during the embryonic development itself when she is in her mother's womb itself then only before she is born then only the process of oogenesis will start whereas spermatogenesis starts at puberty we can tell that oogenesis starts during the embryonic development itself during the embryonic development itself embryonic development means it is a period of gestation when the baby is inside the mother's womb fetal stage itself now it is third uh, human gestation is for 36 weeks right so we can tell that during the four weeks itself uh, during the four or four to six weeks of gestation itself what happens some primordial germ cells will be there they migrate from the yolk sac what is yolk sac allantois all these things are parts of the egg right so, uh, these things during 4 to 6 weeks, let us write down during 4 to 6 weeks of embryonic development or we can tell during 4 to 6 weeks of gestation we will tell because embryo word we can use later.
primordial germ cells you know primordial germ cells they start moving they migrate from the yolk sac primordial germ cells from the 4 to 6 weeks of that embryo they move from the yolk sac towards genital ridge they move from the yolk sac where do they move they move towards genital ridge now in females this genital ridge will make the female gonad called ovary in females genital ridge develops this ridge only develops into female gonad what is female gonad ovary and germ cells inside we know that the germinal epithelium will be there inside the gonads so in females this genital ridge only will develop the female gonad ovary and germ cells right now if you go to 6 to 8 weeks of gestation or 6 to 8 weeks of embryonic development we told that spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty in boys the age of puberty is 13 to 14 years whereas we told oogenesis starts before her birth itself when she is in her mother's womb itself then we are telling when she is around 4 to 6 weeks inside in the fetal stage 4 to 6 weeks of gestation itself some cells which are called as germ cells they move out of the yolk sac towards the genital ridge in fetal embryo this genital ridge only will form the female reproductive part called female gonad which is called ovary and this ovary contains germ cells these germ cells are called as oogonia these germ cells are called as oogonia around 6 to 8 weeks if you see around 6 to 8 weeks of gestation these oogonia will multiply will multiply will multiply and keep on increasing their number so in 6 to 8 weeks of embryonic development oogonia undergo mitotic division oogonia will undergo mitotic division and they will increase what are they increasing they are increasing the number of oogonia repeatedly they are dividing by mitotic division and they are increasing the number of oogonia like how many oogonia means till 7 million oogonia will be formed they increase the number of oogonia to 7 million by around 20 weeks by around 20 weeks means from 6 to 8 weeks these oogonia started multiplying till when they will multiply till 20 weeks they'll multiply or till they reach the 7 million oogonia they will multiply now when they have reached that 7 million oogonia this is the maximal count now beyond that no more oogonia are added so we can tell beyond 7 million no more multiplication no more multiplication of oogonia before birth also after birth also See, gestation is for uh, nine months, nine months or thirty-six weeks. But here we are telling after twenty weeks, after twenty weeks, when seven million oogonia have been formed, there is no further multiplication. There is no further multiplication after before birth also they will not multiply. After birth also they will not multiply. Means multiplication phase got over. Oogenesis has three phases. Children, the first phase is called as multiplication phase. the first phase is called as multiplication phase we completed the multiplication phase when does the multiplication phase starts it starts from the 4 to 6 weeks of gestation itself they will increase they will multiply they will multiply the gamete mother cells right will oogonia means ova mother cells will multiply and by 20 weeks they will reach 7 million after that they will not divide further means they will not multiply further means multiplication phase got over now what is the second phase the second phase is called growth phase 
the second phase in oogenesis is called growth phase means now he here we can tell that multiplication phase got over growth phase started now what happens in the growth phase means these oogonia now they will grow in size and they will grow they will accumulate the food materials and all and they transform themselves into primary oocytes in the growth phase oogonia we are telling that they will not multiply they will not increase their number but they will grow and they will increase their mass in the growth phase oogonia will grow and they will increase in size they will increase in size and transform into primary oocytes they grow and they become primary oocytes oogonia will grow they will increase in size and transform into so they are changing themselves into primary oocytes so they are transforming themselves into primary oocytes now these primary oocytes site means cell oocyte ova forming cell the first cell is called as primary oocyte now this primary oocyte will be surrounded by a layer of granulosa cells right so let us see that now we are telling that this is oogonia we are telling this is oogonia this oogonia will multiply by mitotic division so and again oogonia again they are multiplying again they are increasing their oogonia like that how many they will become 7 million they will become after this after this maximum number no more further mitotic divisions now they have entered growth phase in growth phase what happens these oogonia will grow in size and they will transform themselves into primary oocyte means take it and make it big because you are telling growth happened make it big and tell now this is called as primary oocyte now this is primary oocyte this primary oocyte is now surrounded by the primary oocyte is now surrounded by spindle shaped cells which are called as granulosa cells this primary oocyte is now surrounded by i'm drawing spindle shaped cells the primary oocyte is surrounded by spindle shaped cells and these spindle shaped cells what are they called granulosa cells so these cells are called granulosa cells and inside it has its nucleus right so now what is this called primary follicle what is there inside inside is primary oocyte this primary oocyte is surrounded by spindle shaped cells granulosa cells now what is this entire structure called primary oocyte surrounded by a layer of spindle shaped granulosa cells surrounded by spindle shaped granulosa cells is called as primordial follicle it is called as primordial follicle did it grow from this much size to this much size it is having abundant cytoplasm it is having the nucleus of the oogonia is called as germinal vesicle it's having its nucleus it's having its abundant cytoplasm it growed and now the primary oocyte has transformed into primordial follicle so oogonia has transformed into primary oocyte that primary oocyte is surrounded by a layer of spindle shaped granulosa cells and it became primordial follicle now what happens these spindle shaped cells they grow and they become cuboidal cells let us see that also this is a primary oocyte only which is inside it is called yeah we can write it as primary oocyte it is primary oocyte abundant nucleus now these spindle shaped cells transform themselves into cube shaped cells right so when these cells become cube like then the primordial follicle also this is a cube like cell so when that this becomes cube like cells then the primordial follicle will be called as primary follicle So now what is this called? This is called primary follicle. What are these called? Cuboidal granulosal cells. These are cuboidal granulosa cells. 
these are cuboidal granulosa cells and inside is primary oocyte now such a structure what is it called primary follicle this is primordial follicle primordial follicle transforms into or it changes into primary follicle primary oocyte surrounded by cuboidal germinal cells or granulosa cells is called as primordial follicle did you understand the boat we started oogenesis and we are telling in oogenesis three phases are there first one is multiplication phase second one is growth phase and the third one is maturation phase now we told the definition of oogenesis here it's a process of formation of egg from the diploid germinal cells in the ovary by meiotic division is called oogenesis oogenesis differs from spermatogenesis in many ways like oogenesis starts in the embryonic stage itself before the girl is born itself it starts at the 4 to uh, 4 to 6 weeks of gestation where some primordial germ cells will migrate from the yolk sac towards the genital ridge this genital ridge will develop into the female gonad called ovary and the germinal cells called oogonia around 6 to 8 weeks these oogonia start multiplying they multiply they multiply they multiply by 20 weeks they will reach a number of 7 million once they reach 7 million there is no further multiplication multiplication phase got over now they enter the next stage called growth phase in growth phase these oogonia will increase in size this much has increased this much and it will become primary oocyte this primary oocyte if it is surrounded by spindle shaped granulosa cells we will call it as a primordial follicle now if the spindle shaped granulosa cells if they transform into cube shaped granulosa cells then the primordial follicle will get converted into primary follicle take a screenshot we will continue right now by 20 weeks these primary follicles how many primary follicles will be there 7 million oogonia are there means 7 million primary follicles will be there so these primary follicles after reaching that 7 million number primary follicle which is having primary oocyte inside after reaching that 7 million number so they don't grow further also they don't divide further also and they start undergoing degradation degeneration which is called follicular atresia right so how, how many we saw primary follicles we saw the primary follicles now what do they start degeneration the primary follicles which are inside the fetus right they start degeneration the primary follicles are degenerating so the process is called as follicular atresia they undergo degeneration which is called follicular atresia so atresia means degeneration of the follicles by a mechanism called apoptosis by a mechanism what is that mechanism called by a mechanism called apoptosis do you know what is apoptosis programmed cell death programmed cell death the cell knows it has to die how many cells should die where they should go and die everything is programmed it's fixed rbc also will go to the spleen and spleen is considered as a graveyard there they start destroying in the same manner these primary follicles they start undergoing follicular atresia by a mechanism called programmed cell death or apoptosis now from 20 weeks from 20 weeks to 36 weeks the follicular atresia will continue from 20 weeks to 30 weeks the follicular degeneration no follicular atresia will continue follicular atresia will continue 
and after 36 weeks of pregnancy when the girl is born the girl is born with primary follicles after birth also after birth also the follicular atresia will continue after birth also we can tell because after 36 weeks girl will be born after fall uh, after birth also the follicular degeneration atresia will continue the follicular atresia will continue and at the time of puberty 10 to 14 years is the age of puberty right and at the time of puberty how many follicles will be there in each ovary with the girl how many are there once upon a time when she is inside at 20 weeks 7 million are there that 70 million started degeneration it seems the process is called follicular atresia the mechanism is called apoptosis from 20 weeks to 36 weeks they are degenerating so many are degenerating after she is born also they are in the continuous process of degeneration at the age of puberty how many are left out means only 60 to 80 thousand of primary follicles are left out in each ovary right ovary 60 to 80 thousand left ovary also 60 to 80 thousand will be left out millions became thousands right so at puberty only 60,000 to 80,000 primary follicles primary follicles are where are they present left out where in each ovary in each ovary only those many are left out at the time of puberty the age of puberty is 10 to 14 years in girls right so at the time only 60 to 80 thousand primary follicles will be left out okay now what happens A periodic cycle will start age of puberty means where the hormonal production starts right so at puberty what happens at puberty so we have hypothalamus no right hypothalamus will produce a hormone called gonadotrophin releasing hormone right hypothalamus will produce a hormone called gnrh gonadotrophin releasing hormone what is this called gonadotrophin releasing hormone this GnRH comes and acts on pituitary, anterior pituitary, right? It acts on anterior pituitary. Then the anterior pituitary produces gonadotrophins. The anterior pituitary produces two hormones. The two hormones are called gonadotrophins. The names of the gonadotrophins are luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. At the time of puberty, hypothalamus will produce GnRH, gonadotrophin releasing hormone. This GnRH will come and act on anterior pituitary. Then the anterior pituitary will produce the gonadotrophins called LH and FSH. Now this LH and FSH will help in the development of the follicles. They will help in development of follicles. So growth phase multiplication phase over growth phase over what is the third phase in oogenesis maturation phase now when will maturation start when the girl is matured when the girl has reached her periodic cycles when will that happen at the age of puberty at the age of puberty what happened means hormonal production started luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone started now these hormones will help in development of the follicles so these luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone so they help in development they help in development of prime she is born with primary follicles 60 to 80000 they help in development of primary follicles they help in development of primary follicles understood now, how is a primary follicle? Come on, tell me. We draw the diagram of primary follicle and we are telling like this is a primary oocyte having its own nucleus, having abundant cytoplasm is surrounded by cuboidal granulosa cells, we told, right? Let us draw that. 
so this is what we have seen prime uh, primary follicle right so what are these cells called these are called granulosa cells one layer of granulosa cells will be there and what is this called this is called primary follicle this is called primary follicle now it will be surrounded by one more layer so the granulosa cells i am increasing one more layer then also it is primary follicle only then also it is primary follicle only now what happens around this theca layers will develop around this theca the granulosa cells will secrete theca cells theca layer will develop if we have to draw that theca layers how should we draw this is primary oocyte this is primary oocyte and uh, this one is called as primary oocyte right this primary oocyte is surrounded by granulosa layer of cells no yeah one minute shall we take a screenshot we'll draw it on big on the board so this space will not be sufficient take a screenshot right third phase maturation phase what happens means we will draw right what is this membrane called this is the plasma membrane or we can call it as vitellin membrane this is called vitellin membrane right this is the diploid nucleus here is the cytoplasm this space is called vitellin space perivitellin space this space is called perivitellin space now it is surrounded by granulosa cells that's what we told all these cube like granulosa cells many layers will be there because now it is transforming into secondary follicle right so let us draw two three layers of the granulosa cells this is one layer i am drawing another layer one more layer again all these are granulosa cells and now these granulosa cells are surrounded by a membrane that membrane is called basement membrane so if we draw a membrane around this it will become a basement membrane so what is this basement membrane and what are these cells inside called granulosa cells these cells are called granulosa cells now this is a primary oocyte inside surrounded by vitellin membrane this is called perivitellin space and this another blue line is called as zona pellucida what is another layer called it's called zona pellucida will blue this is zona pellucida this is basement membrane now outside this basement membrane theca cells will develop now here and there only they just started if it is irregular like this so this is called theca layer 
right so when such a type of organization is there what are these cells called theca cells when such a type of organization is there then we call it as a secondary follicle what is this called secondary follicle this is called secondary follicle when did the primary follicle transform into see we discussed right oogonia multiplied and they have became they have multiplied and they formed many oogonia this oogonia transformed into primary oocyte this primary oocyte is surrounded by granulosa cells and it became primary follicle it became primary follicle now this primary follicle this primary follicle what happened this primary follicle which is surrounded by only one layer of granulosa cells which is surrounded by one layer of granulosa cells entered maturation phase it entered maturation phase and it started meiosis the primary follicles they started meiosis so they started meiosis 1 they started meiosis 1 when inside the womb itself they started meiosis 1 but what happens the meiosis 1 it will start it will start prophase 1 so it will uh, go through what is that leptotene stage leptotene uh, the next one is uh, dip, uh, zygotene paketene it will go to diplotene stage and gets arrested in the diplotene stage it gets arrested in the diplotene stage the primary follicles they started they entered maturation phase they started meiosis 1 they started prophase 1 in the prophase they have finished leptotene stage zygotene stage paketene stage they came to the diplotene stage in the diplotene stage they'll get arrested they'll get arrested so they got arrested and then that primary oocyte will be there inside the primary follicle and she is born the girl is born with this primary fo follicles in which the meiosis got arrested she is born with the primary follicles she is born with the primary follicles now when the age of puberty comes when the age of puberty comes when the hormonal production starts fsh and luteinizing hormonal production starts then meiosis 1 will resume back again uh, in at puberty under the influence of fsh and lh the primary follicle the primary follicle it grows and it becomes secondary follicle it grows and becomes secondary follicle under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone primary follicle should grow and become secondary follicle then tertiary follicle then graafian follicle matured graafian follicle will tell so under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone the follicles are getting matured so when will the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone production starts at the age of puberty so at the age of puberty only when the hormonal production starts then the follicular development will resume meiosis 1 will resume the primary follicle will develop into secondary follicle now this secondary follicle it contains theca cells also around it contains theca cells i showed you these are the theca cells integration between the follicular cells the cells which make up the follicle granulosa cells the follicular cells and the theca cells is important so what i am telling integration between the follicular cells and theca cells is important it is important if you see this is a red one is a theca cell right and the green one is the inner follicular cell now we told that pituitary started producing lh and fsh right so now the luteinizing hormone the lh hormone comes and acts on the theca cells the luteinizing hormone comes and acts on the red theca cells then in the theca cells cholesterol will be there that cholesterol under the influence of luteinizing hormone will make a hormone called androgen male hormone it will make 
NH converts cholesterol to androgen. This androgen moves into the granulosa cells, follicular cells. Now, the, in the follicular cells, under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone, in the follicular cells, under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone, this androgen is converted to estrogen. Female sex hormone, what is this? This is female sex hormone. Now, estrogen, the female sex hormone production has started. So, that's why we tell that the female sex hormone, estrogen, is produced by the developing follicles. What are the developing follicles? Secondary follicle, tertiary follicle and graphene follicle. How are they producing? See carefully. Primary follicle will transform into secondary follicle when the age of puberty starts. What do you mean by age of puberty? When the pituitary hormone production starts. What are the pituitary hormones? LH and FSH. FSH will help in conversion of primary follicle to secondary follicle. Primary follicle doesn't have theca layers. Secondary follicle will have theca layers. So then these theca cells and these follicular cells, they respond with each other. They respond to luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. And they help in production of the female sex hormone called estrogen. So when the estrogen levels are there, estrogen levels and FSH levels will help in follicular development. Will help in follicular development. Take a screenshot. Right. Now, <clears throat> let me erase this. Now, what you are seeing is secondary follicle, right? In the secondary follicle, now what happens? Under the influence of the follicle stimulating hormone, under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone, these follicular cells, these follicular cells start secreting fluid now. The follicular cells start secreting fluid. So, when they are secreting fluid, they make fluid filled cavities here and there. Here and there, they are making fluid filled cavities in this manner. So, we can write that under the influence, under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone. So, who are getting influenced by the follicle stimulating hormone? The green colored cells means the granulosa cells. The granulosa cells. The granulosa cells secrete. What are they secreting? Fluid. Filled. Cavities. They are making small, small fluid filled cavity. One cavity here, another cavity, another cavity, another cavity here. Now, in the next stage, all these fluid filled cavities will collapse to make a big cavity. So, later, all these small fluid filled cavities, all the small fluid filled cavities, they collapse to form a big cavity. What is that big cavity called? Anthrum. They form a big cavity called anthrum. Means all these cells, all these cells will now degenerate and they are making a fluid filled cavity. What is this fluid filled cavity called? This fluid filled cavity will be called as anthrum. So, it is making this much fluid filled cavity. This fluid filled cavity is called as anthrum. So, one change we saw. Under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone, the granulosa cells will secrete fluid. That small, small fluid spaces will combine to make a big fluid filled cavity to make anthrum. Meanwhile, the theca cells also will differentiate and they will form internal cells are called theca interna, external cell called theca externa. So, these cells also will differentiate now. The theca cells also differentiate now and the internal cells will become theca internal cells and the external cells will be little rigid. I am just joining all the theca layers. So, these are the internal cells. Internal cells, what do they make? They make theca interna. Surrounded by one more layer of cells called theca externa. So, this is surrounded by one more layer of theca cells. Now, these theca cells are called theca externa. Right? 
like this. So, what is this called? Theca externa. And what are these called inside red colored ones? It is called Theca interna. So, Theca externa, Theca interna, anthrum, everything is formed. Now, what is this called? This becomes tertiary follicle then. This becomes tertiary follicle. So, primary follicle transformed into secondary follicle. Secondary follicle has transformed into tertiary follicle. In tertiary follicle, oocyte is there, primary oocyte is there, surrounded by a vitalin membrane are surrounded by perivitalin space is there and then fluid filled anthrum is there and then we are having theca interna and theca externa layers. Now these cells which are here, these cells, the granulosa cells which are near to this as a mass is called cumu uh, cumulus ophius. So those cells are called cumulus ophius cells. Now what happens? Under the influence of uh, LH and FSH, the primary oocyte is growing, right? So, it is continuing meiosis 1. It is continuing meiosis 1. It will continue meiosis 1. It will finish off meiosis 1 and it will develop into a secondary oocyte and first polar body. It forms a secondary oocyte and it forms a first polar body. Now, after the tertiary follicle is formed, what changes we can expect inside means under the influence of hormones, meiosis 1 will get completed and the oocyte which is inside, the primary oocyte which is inside undergoes an unequal division. Why am I telling unequal division? Because secondary oocyte will be big and it will be haploid having one set of chromosomes. The first polar body will be very small having one set of chromosomes. Since one big cell and one small cell is formed, I am telling this is an unequal division. Meiosis 1 is an unequal division. Unequal division will get completed and the secondary oocyte and first polar body will be formed. Now that means the primary oocyte which is inside in the tertiary follicle under the influence of these hormones became secondary oocyte now means this will transform into if we make it black it will become secondary oocyte and where is the first polar body the small cell will be there in the perivitalin space here this is the first polar body it's still attached to the secondary oocyte but it is there where this is called as tertiary follicle this tertiary follicle grows matures and it becomes a matured graphene follicle it becomes a matured graphene follicle. Now, this matured graphene follicle will start meiosis 2. It will start meiosis 2. Meiosis 2 is started by the secondary oocyte which is inside the graphene follicle. The secondary oocyte will start meiosis 2 and prophase 2 will happen. Metaphase 2 will start, it gets arrested. So, the secondary oocyte which is inside the matured graphene follicle started meiosis 2. It will start meiosis 2, it will complete prophase 2, it will go to metaphase 2 and in the metaphase stage it gets arrested. In the metaphase stage it gets arrested, right. So, then what happens? In the form of secondary oocyte only, it will be released out during the time of ovulation with the increased amounts of LH hormone with the increased amounts of LH hormone, right. So, what did we discuss till now? We started oogenesis. In oogenesis, we told it is a process of formation of haploid ova from the diploid germ cells inside the ovary is called as oogenesis. And spermatogenesis is different because it starts at uh, after birth, at puberty. But oogenesis started before birth itself. Four to six weeks cells started. So, it has formed few ogonia. It has entered multiplication phase. From 6 to 8 weeks till 28, uh, 20 weeks, it increased to 7 million in number. Now, after 20 weeks, atresia will start. Then, these uh, prime oogonia will grow now. They will enter into growth phase. They will grow now. And what they will become? They will become primary follicles. Primary follicles will degenerate before birth also, after birth also. 
and at puberty how many are left out means 60 to 80,000 are only left out. Now at puberty when the hypothalamus produces GnRH then it comes and acts on anteripitary it produces LH and FSH hormones. This LH and FSH will act on the ovaries right they will act on the ovaries what inside ovaries what are their primary follicles are there those primary follicles will develop into secondary follicle will develop into tertiary follicle primary follicle will have only granulosa cells secondary follicle will have granulosa cells and theca cells now tertiary follicle will have granulosa cells theca externa theca interna fluid filled cavity also anthrum and tertiary follicle will complete meiosis 1 and the primary oocyte will differentiate into secondary oocyte and the first polar body. Secondary oocyte is haploid, first polar body is also haploid. One small and one big cell. So, that is why we are calling it as an unequal division. Now, inside this tertiary follicle, the secondary oocyte will start meiosis 2, gets arrested in metaphase 2. It gets arrested in metaphase 2. Now, in the next class, we will discuss the remaining part of oogenesis. Hope you